Hello everyone. Um, I'm getting near the end of this. I've got detail painting left. I'm going to have to touch up some of the paint where the tape was. I'm sure of that. So I'm going to start talking about stand. This is a piece of oak. What I did is I went to my local home improvement store, bought a piece of furniture grade oak, cut it with a miter saw, took a router, beveled the edge. You don't need to do this if you don't have the tools. You can just go to your local big box hobby shop like Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's. They sell boards already edged like this. Now they're relatively inexpensive, four or five dollars, not that bad. This one's oak. If you could even find oak in a store like that, I'm sure it would be expensive. Um, I need to sand this. What I plan on doing for the base is the ship balances really well on three fingers right here. Turn that so you guys can see it. Two here, one here. I bought some acrylic rods. I'm gonna embed the acrylic rods in the base, in the center, coming out at slightly different angles so I can balance the ship on it. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on the tips of the acrylic rods just yet. I bought some liquid electrical tape. I'm gonna experiment around with that. I don't want to stain the paint job on the model with whatever I use to tip the ends of the acrylic rods with. I might just glue some felt circles on the ends of the rods. I wanna put something on the end so I don't scratch up my paint job that I've spent so much time doing, okay? I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in the front of the base. I'm gonna put something, a plaque or something saying what is going on. Um, you know, saying the name of the ship or what its class is and all that. Got the white coat on her. All I'm gonna do next is peel off the tape. Once the tape's peeled off, I'll show you what it looks like. Be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. Here she is with all the tape pulled off. Now, I'm gonna zoom in so we can see a few details. A couple of things. This side over here, I forgot to trim the frisket along here. So you can see it doesn't match this side over here. I'm gonna have to fix that by hand brushing. Paint leakage in a few places. There's some paint leakage there. Corner there. A few places here and there. I'll get the brush out and touch them up along the edges here. Um, nothing in the back. Turn her over. Bad spots right here. Real bad spots right there. You can see it compared to the other side, what the difference is between the two. Saucer section. Let me zoom out a tad bit. Saucer section. Most of that came out good. Okay. The masking fluid was wonderful. Pulled out in one piece. I could not believe how well that cleaned out of there. I mean, just beautifully pulled out. You can see some paint leakage around this saucer area right here. Another bad spot with my tape job right there. I missed trimming a piece of tape. But give me a couple hours with uh, some gray and white paint and I'll fix almost all of my paint mistakes. Now, back in the back, back here. These areas, I left them pretty open. There's a lot of intricate panel lines in here. What I'm thinking of doing is doing a wash with white paint. I want to use, I bought two different kinds of paint. I bought an enamel, testers enamel. This thing's painted with acrylic paint, so using an enamel paint won't disturb this paint job at all. Another paint I could use would be, and I bought this, some white oil paints. Not sure I want to use the white oil paints, reason for that is the white oil paints tend to take forever to dry. I don't want to wait four days for this paint to dry. It's just not a good idea in my mind. But here you go. Quick update. What she looks like with the tape removed. I think it came out pretty good. Uh, again, just a little bit of touching up here and there. And I will have, oops, found a piece of frisket I forgot to remove. And I will have that cleaned up and I'll be able to do detail painting. 
Now, quick thing before I go. Want to say a couple of things. Tape versus frisket. Frisket worked wonderful. As long as the edges were not peeling up before you painted it, it worked beautifully at keeping the paint out. You know, the edges are crisp on the frisket. In fact, they're crisper in a lot of the places where I put tape. So I like using the frisket, and I will probably keep using it. Tape has its places, though, for these long straight lines down here on the underside. All of that is tape. I like how the tape did that. So I'm going to keep using the tape. Okay? But again, the frisket did a wonderful job, too. So I'm going to continue to use the frisket where I can. Well, that's it for now. Um, next time you see it, well, next in the next segment, I will have cleaned up that paint and started the detail painting, painting the warp engines. And there are some areas that are going to get some black black. Well, thank you for now. Okay, quick update. I've started on some of the detail painting. As you can see, I've painted part of the warp engines silver. They're not going to stay silver. That's just an undercoat. When I'm done with the silver paint, I'm going to use Tamiya Clear and Red in different areas. And I've got a few other effects I want to do with that. I painted these areas flat black, as you can see. I started cleaning up some of the overspray. I still need to do a little bit of work on that. I got to hit the gray and then once more with the white. I'm still trying to figure out what to do about the details back in here and how to paint them. I think I might actually hit these with a whitewash. Not sure. I detailed that in an earlier video. I haven't compared the acrylic white to the enamel white yet. All the painting that has been done so far is with acrylics. It's going to be important for what I get to in a minute. As you can see in the video, I've also started detailing a few of these windows. What I started off with there was a pencil. Plain old ordinary pencil that you would use you know, for schoolwork. That worked fine and I started with a pencil because pencil can be cleaned up real quickly. The problem with pencil though is it wasn't filling in the windows right. They weren't looking good to me. You could see that there was pencil lead in there and if you overdid it a little bit, it, the pencil lead itself was gouging out the ink from, I mean the graphite from the pencil and it was leaving marks. It just didn't look good. So I got out a Micron pen. I have a bunch of these. was going to use them for panel lines on a different build and then I slipped with them and it did not make me happy. Uh, one of the problems with that is you slip with this, you gotta clean it up somehow. The best way to clean it up is with some enamel paint thinner. That model was covered with enamel paints. You, know, you paint something with enamel paints, you can't use an enamel paint thinner to clean up your mistakes. This one is painted with acrylics. Enamel paint thinners don't really touch acrylics. So I'm using the Micron pen. I have made a mistake or two. You can still see a little bit here, but I probably can clean that up with a whitewash. One last thing before I drop this little segment, get off this segment. Um, the base coats of this model were painted with testers acrylics. This is Tamiya flat black. The two paints do not get along very well. The Tamiya just eats right down to the testers and loosens it up. And in a few spots, like right here, I don't know if you can see that in the video. I'll bring it in closer, you probably can, but we'll lose light. Um, every time I put some flat black right there, it mixes in with the underpinning white and it bleeds through. So I'm just going to keep at it. Eventually, I'll get it, the black globbed on there enough, and it'll cover up that white. One of the great things about flat black is it is very forgiving about globbing the paint. You don't really see paint runs or brush strokes with it very well, which makes me really happy. All right, that's it for this little segment. Uh, we'll be back with an update later.